Yeah, there was like ten people in the room before or something. Yeah, there was only one. Uh huh. Maybe we have our uh, 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 it's better to be full than a big room that is mostly empty, but we cannot violate the heart. I like to live just, I like to be. Yeah, no, no, I think, yeah. It is, it is. Yeah, but when you can stay here with your cooking and coffee. Well, do we have some coffee? Yeah. Yeah. What's the back table? Oh, there's that, so, so kitchen are honking the cookies. <laughs> Those who are sitting by the cookie, we, we know your, your intentions. Maybe we should set the uh, cookies like out there. Uh, we don't have to. <laughs> I pay for the cookie if it's up to me. There's an open chair. There are probably more chairs over there, right? The other other room. Yes. So the point of this this seminar series yeah. is to give people opportunity to run into each other. You know, of course, we like to listen to good speakers. Uh, speakers are sort of an excuse too, in a way. So that's why we have cookies and coffee. Like we would like people to come, you know, meet people, meet each other. I, I, I think we'll have to get a new <laughs> getting a new yeah, maybe the stool, just the stool. Can we put the cookies by coffee? They kind of go together. Where is this one? Stool shed the light. What is stool shed the light? <laughs> no, I don't know whether it's a. Oh, oh, but, um, somebody with two hands. Take the. I don't know. It's very, very. Just put, put it by the hobby. Put it by the hobby. Put it by the hobby. Yeah. 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 If like everyone here, or I can, I guess it's you introduce yourself. Yeah, I'm the old <laughs> master. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, hello. Uh, I'm, I'm, how are you? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm a new postdoc here. I just arrived here like two, two months ago, and uh, right, and uh, it's nice to for me to have the opportunity to, to make myself a speaker to to tell my uh, master. <laughs> <laughs> but just to be clear, you can't go on forever. At some point, someone will cut you off. Okay, great. Uh, right. Uh, so, yeah, so the title of my talk is uh, uh, Large End Theory of uh, Critical Permit Surface and String Metals. So, uh, before I start, let me uh, let me just try to uh, acknowledge my collaborators. So, uh, it's, uh, first one is Lydia Estelis, who is now a professor at uh, Wisconsin Madison. Uh, next is uh, Arshka Patel, who is uh, now a flat iron, and uh, Subir Sashtev, who is my uh, PhD advisor. So, oh, yeah, but um, um, remember this IO, IO streaming now? Okay, never mind. Uh, we'll just start. Uh, right, so let me tell you what kind of problem we are looking into and uh, uh, the, the kind of the problems we want to solve. So first, I want just want to introduce uh, to a, to a more conventional kind of uh, system that we, I think, is most people know, which is a uh, which is a Fermi liquid. So right, so the so Fermi liquid was uh, first uh, proposed by Landau to 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 to, to, to describe uh, an interacting electron system. So uh, the essence of Fermi liquid theory uh, is that uh, uh, if you have an ideal system with no interaction, you have you have a real particle. Uh, become uh, like a real force, but then when, when you turn on electron electron interaction, uh, uh, it, turn, uh, it turns out that some, some, some of the, the characteristics of that uh, single electron is, is actually capped, uh, like uh, 
uh, if you edit basically switch on the interaction. Uh, so what you get is uh, what is now called a Gaussian particle. So it is a, a single particle uh, addressed by the nearby uh, particles. Uh, as shown in this cartoon, is that uh, uh, a horse will contain a Gaussian horse, but there is still some features of the horse that that is remain that you can use to identify. For example, there's a mouth and nose and a tail that you could somehow still related to a to, to a horse. So uh, so we apply the same analogy to particles. So we we invent the concept of Gaussian particles. So so quasi particles have uh, many many characteristics that looks like a real particle. So uh, uh, the one, one of the main things that it, it is a, a weakly interacting uh, concept. So that means that uh, 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 so it means that uh, if you if you look at the 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 the, the density of states of those uh, harmonic quasi particles, we will find that near zero energy is finite. Uh, just 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 like a, a free Fermi gas has Fermi surface, those. Uh, uh, from uh, fermionic positive particles, they also have a Fermi surface, uh, many a uh, finite detective of states, but then they are still a, 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 a weakly interacting object. So that means that their lifetime is actually uh, my, my, um, uh, my, my much longer than, than their characteristic energy. So the concept of positive particles allow us to, to, to do calculation, for example, to, to try to calculate the lifetime of a, of a positive particle. Uh, it turns out in, in most of the cases, the lifetime of a quasi particle is actually bottlenecked by the base space that's available for for particle particle scattering. For example, if you consider a two particles scattering event, you could just uh, try to count what, what is the base space that's available for this quasi particle to scatter with. You will find that it's proportional to n square or t square, and and that means that, uh, for example, the resistivity of a of a firm liquid will usually go 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 up like t square. For example, here are some. Classical examples, which is a, 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 a bismuth metal and also a, a graphite. Uh, you can see here their temperature as a uh, their resistivity as a function of temperature grows as a C square. And uh, and uh, since we have a uh, firm liquid now, then what we are interested in is actually it's this things that um, that there's not a firm liquid. So uh, the mystery there is no quasi particle in our system. So what has uh, the, the same thing that that, that that shares the same thing that doesn't vary from the uh, from from liquid cases that if you look at the density of states of the of those from the, those, those fermionic things it is still a constant that means you still have a Fermi surface but uh, but now if if you look at look at the the, the lifetime of uh, of this uh, fermionic object you will find that its lifetime is actually uh, um, much shorter than its characteristic energy so it's no longer a well defined object. And then, and then in between the firm liquid and non-firm liquid uh, case, there is uh, something that is uh, what we call the uh, marginal firm liquid. That just means that its uh, lifetime is actually comparable to, to, to its uh, uh, characteristic energy. Uh, next, uh, let me try to introduce uh, what is called strange metal. So this is something that uh, I think the most uh, uh, well known example of a strange metal is uh, is in the in in the, in the Cooper's work conductors. Uh, uh, for example, there, there is a, a critical coping uh, in the Cooper that people believe is associated with some quantum critical point. Then the, up, above the critical coping, there is a, a wide region in the phase diagram that is uh, uh, given the name uh, strange metal. So the most strange things about this strange metal is that it's a resistivity as a functional temperature. Uh, so, uh, for example, these cases are, are the resistivity data of some typical cooperates. You will find that uh, its resistivity actually grows linearly with temperature. So, th this is uh, uh, parametrically much larger than the, what, what a firm liquid theory would tell us, which, which is T squared. And, uh, and uh, for example, here is uh, an experiment here that also involves the local people here at Cornell that they, they measure the, the 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 the, the scaring time the scaring time of a uh, cooperator uh, and then they, they map out the scaring time as a as a functional coordinate on the Fermi surface and they found out that there is a uh, two parts there is an isotropic part which is uh, uh, independent of the temperature but there is an isotropic scaring part which actually scales linearly with temperature and moreover if you try to uh, extract the time scales uh, with the, the effective mass uh, measured from point oscillation you will actually find out that uh, that the scaring time will will will, will will go like a KBT or H bar, and then the coefficient, the uh, alpha is uh, of order one. So this is uh, what some people uh, call a Planckian scattering. 
And uh, another strange characteristic of, uh, of, uh, of those strange metals is that its resistivity is actually uh, also more, more singular than what, what a Fermi liquid would be. So at low temperature, a Fermi liquid will have a specific key that goes linearly in temperature. But then, uh, but then in the cooperage, it was found out that the near the critical doping, the, 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 the specific key actually goes like T log one over T. So there is a, a, an additional um, a log factor that makes the specific key more singular. And there are also things that people see in the optical conductivity. Uh, this is uh, uh, data from uh, Louis Tyler's group. Uh, what they found is that they may measure the, 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 the optical conductivity at the different frequency and different temperature. And what they found is that the, the optical conductivity actually shows a scaling collapse. If you uh, rescale the, 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 the real part of the optical resistivity, uh, uh, with temperature and also plot the data in terms of omega over t, they actually find a scaling collapse. So, uh, so that means that uh, at uh, at uh, at the zero frequency, they find a linear t uh, uh, resistivity, but then at the uh, finite frequency, they they found a, a universal function that is uh, of uh, omega over t. So, to just to summarize the, the experimental findings of. Uh, of a strange metal, so I, I will I will call a strange metal that that there's something that satisfies these uh, three uh, that they, that they shows these three characteristics. So first, uh, there is a linear to resistivity, uh, and then uh, a specific that the resistivity should be uh, should be smaller than a, than a quantum unit of uh, resistance. Uh, otherwise, it's called a bad metal. Uh, next is that uh, it's a it's a no temperature specific key uh, goes like t log one over t. And then it's uh, it's all it's, it's optical conductivity can be can be parameterized in this dual formula form. And then if you if you look at it, it's uh, the, 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 the 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 dissipative part of the optical conductivity, you will find that it, it can be written as a, a universal function of the uh, uh, with omega over Questions. Right. Um, to what extent do we know that these are correlated phenomenology? Meaning they can have picked two out of the three and can find straight metal quote or a straight metal uh, whatever person. Yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's more like those are empirical observations, but they Based also appear in some other material platforms like a heavy fermions, some similar things. Or then these three things always happen. Well, they, multiple material. Yeah, yeah right. these three things. Yeah, at least two classes of materials. I guess. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Right, so this is uh, so the goal of our uh, study is try to propose a, a theory for, for such kind of a strange method. So let me just talk about the ingredients of our theory. Uh, so so we, we, we start from the, a, a, a toy model which is called the, the critical Fermi surface. So the ingredients is that uh, we start from from a a a, a fermion with, with a body defined Fermi surface. Uh, say so it look, looks like that, and then and then we want want to want, we want to destroy the Fermi liquid in in this uh, uh, in this uh, free fermion. So the the most uh, the easy way to to try to destroy those uh, uh, fermionic positive particles is to couple it to a, to a, to a, to a critical boson. So uh, in the physical situation, this critical model can, man, can mean many things. It could be, for example, some isomimetic order parameter, besides structure inferomagnetic order parameter, or it can be some, some transverse components of uh, some gauge fields that, that, for example, may arise from a spin liquid. So this kind of model is uh, uh, actually pretty general. Then, uh, of course, we want a, a strong coupling theory. So we'll just try to couple the frame of the both on the, uh, through a, a Yukawa coupling. So, so this kind of uh, theory is actually not 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 too. Uh, it has actually been studied before in the early days of solid state physics, for example, in the in the electron phonon uh, system. Uh, for example, in the electron phonon system, people find that the, the resistivity will go like t to the t to the uh, fifth. Uh, however, this is called this is called a block theorem. 
but then the, the, a plus law, not plus theory. So, so but, but this plus law it actually ignores the, the, the conservation of the momentum of the total system, and then it ignores the feedback of phonons uh, back to the electrons. That's what people call phonon drag. So, so, the, so that type of approximation is only valid for weak coupling. But the problem we are looking at is a strong coupling. So, so we really need to take serious effect of the drag effect between the fermion and the, and the boson section. So it turns out that uh, the, the coupling is so strong, such that the fermions and bosons, they are, they are both uh, destroyed as a positive particle. So uh, we have to consider the system as a single fluid. And another new thing that we have uh, put into our story that's not considered before is that uh, we have to consider the effects of disorder, but not, not the conventional type of potential disorder, but actually a, a kind of a disorder in the, in the interactions. So uh, what we're saying there is that this coupling constant in, between the fermions and bosons they actually have, 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 have a disorder component. So for example, this can be motivated by this uh, recent uh, experiments that uh, they, 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 met, they, 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 they measure the, the, the gap, the, the gap the, as, a, as, a, as a function of spatial coordinates in, the, in, the, in a group of superconductor. And then what they found is that it is, uh, the, the gap map is actually very, very disordered. Then that means that the superconductor itself is uh, uh, kind of very disordered. So, uh, and then with some kind of half a stroke of which transformation, you can actually put this kind of uh, disorder uh, into the into the fermion boson coupling constant. And right, and uh, the, the, this kind of problem we're studying is, is of course, uh, has been there for many decades, and many, many people have tried that. And uh, and uh, I think that the, the common lesson that people have learned is that this problem is very hard. Uh, uh, for, for example, so uh, in the early days, people just thought that uh, we can just do a do a do a naive large n expansion of the theory. Uh, but it was shown by something Lee that uh, if you do a do do a, do a naive large n theory, where you just have uh, n flavors of fermions and uh, and one flavor of boson. If, if he found that this uh, theory is IR divergent, he found that the actual ex expansion parameter is the genius of, of your thing on diagram. So that means that uh, you're you're to sum those diagrams, you're you're like the summing the string theory. So it's uh, as far as a string theory. And then later people try to uh, invent it at different techniques, so for example, to, to, to do various kind, kind of uh, uh, epsilon expansion or, or dim dimensional regularization of the Fermi surface. Uh, but these approaches turn out to have their own problems. Oh, I have a question. Sure. Why not constrain the phi, the boson? Uh, what do you mean constrain? It, it seems like it's a convergence problem, right? So if it's physical, no. then are we missing something in the boson description that might help it converge? Uh, like a... Like a large... Even if it's a large end theory. Like a, it's like a... Basically, it must converge, but like a, it's the convergence is not in the limit that we can reach by our human minds. So, <laughs> right. okay, got it. Yeah. No, but the problem is not so much to do with the boson itself. It has to do with the gaplessness of the firm surface that it's coupled to. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, right. Because there, there is a, a large number of those, those uh, low energy of freedom, which is living on the firm surface. So, low energy? Right, because to excite a particle near the frame surface, it costs almost zero energy. So right, so the problem is uh, to, to to tame this large number of uh, uh, low energy excitations. Yeah, so so then we are get, getting our our inspirations from another uh, kind type of uh, uh, soluble models, which are called uh, such a big models. So it is a it is a model of uh, of uh, non quasi particle physics in, in zero plus one dimension. So there is no there is no space, but uh, but just time. So the Hamiltonian is such that uh, it's just a C dagger C dagger with C C. But then they, they make it such that this uh, uh, this four body coupling here is a is a is a Gaussian random uh, variable. It it just miraculously turns out that if you make things uh, messy, it, it actually becomes more organized and so. Uh, Right, so the, the main message to, to, to we, we take from this, uh, this this kind of exactly soluble model is that they were, why, why not just try to make, make things from the random a little bit? So that, that's what we tried. So we, we, we started assigning this extra flavor indices to the fermions and the bosons, and then, and then the, the power coupling between those uh, fermion bosons, they become a, 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 a three index tensor. 
Then it's say, okay, let, let, let's just make this coupling a, 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 a random variable. So it's a, it's a zero mean and then it's a, it's a, it's a variance is G square. And then it turns out that well, once, once we do this, we are, we are, we are actually able to, to in some extent to, to analytically uh, solve this theory. Um, zero mean is important, I suppose, for, the technical, uh, for technical reasons. Right, yeah, for technical reasons. And does this, does this kind of thing comes out because of some RG reasoning? Yeah, meaning that I don't have to put it in my hand, but uh, if I really just do have chemical potential in this one, like that uh, I guess that doesn't happen because that is always in this our artificial flavor space. Uh -huh, I see. Right. So it's not actually in real space. Yeah. Right. Is it possible to relate those two theories by some kind of hypothesis uh, generation? Uh, Opinion theory and this kind of graphic uh, The four four formula theory and this one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that one I haven't solved. Before. So, uh, right as I talk about later, you see that because this 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 kind of coupling is engineered, that's where you, you get get a simple set a uh, simple set of points. So right, so so we, 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 with this a uh, 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 random coupling trick, we uh, actually we can we can we can we solve those uh, three three different kinds of series. So. Sorry. Sorry, one more question. Sure. Um, so the flavors are in the bosons as well as fermions? You're right, yeah. Uh, you, can, you can make them different numbers, but for here, for this, you just may make them all, all, all with M flavors. But well, bosons can can have a, a different proportionality constant to them to M. So, but by SY, can you call it uh, not having like multiple fermion terms, but just fermion boson coupling and the coupling right. on random? Right, yeah. Um, I see. So it's, it's a new new variation. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you call it like. Uh, and and, and you, you're going to get the boson from somewhere. Yeah, for example, there's a. Uh, we can. People it's guess okay. there's a okay. point, right? <laughs> <laughs> like a, that, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> We, we, we have it. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, the wider is the same order. Yeah. The, the, the and is the same order for the both Right, right. Right. Do you fix the ratio or not? Yeah, the ratio here is one. You can you can change it to the other k. That, that, that's not that's not essential. But as long as but, but here is that the, the boson is a is a vector boson. Like there is only one index point, but not two indices. So right, so there are three kinds of series we can solve. So we can we can solve this original problem where this there's just a a, a you call it like a coupling. Then we found out that this we indeed get a non from liquid, but it's not quite a strange method that, that, that it doesn't satisfy the criteria I, I, I just described earlier. Uh, so therefore, we must uh, consider some more realistic uh, uh, systems where you you consider effects of disorder. So the first thing we try is of course the more conventional uh, potential disorder. So we find a, a marginal form liquid which measures some experiments, but it's, it's still not a strange method. That means we still don't get a transport. Uh, so finally, that I'll, I'll, we will propose that is that there should be a interact disorder uh, disorder in the interaction coupling, so such that we get both a marginal form liquid and a strange metal. So right, so. Uh, then we can we can just uh, the, the way to solve this series is that you you, you try try to average over this all, all these different couplings and then you could you could just uh, simplify your 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 theory into into in, in, into in, into a bunch of bilinear fields. These d and t's are the Green's functions, and then sigma and pi are the self energies. So and then you take a larger limit and you look for a settle point of of this action. So uh, the sort of point here it turns out to be uh, pretty familiar. It, 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 it is called the the, the Ehlers-Free equations that people have uh, started uh, for many years. So so by, by solving this kind of uh, set of point equations uh, analytically, we found that the the, the self fermion self energy scale is uh, only after two thirds, and then the boson is uh, given by by the Landau damping uh, uh, from the Fermi surface. So the set of point has a dynamical exponent equals three, which is uh, consistent with the conventional Hertz-Mellis or the Ehlers-Berg theory. Uh, and then we just try to look at the, the transport properties of that theory. So basically, it means you you try to sum these Feynman diagrams uh, uh, and all, all, all the letters and the bubbles. So uh, we found that the 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 the, the DC connectivity of the 
uh, of the series is almost infinite because it's transactional invariant and the, the total momentum is, you, there's no way to direct, degrade the momentum, so you cannot degrade the curve. Uh, but then what we found the new is that if you try to calculate the, 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 the optical conductivity of the series, uh, the, the leading order term is, of course, given, given by the Jude formula, which is uh, one over omega. But then there, 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 there is a, a, a next order correction. Uh, and then before it was uh, calculated two decades ago by Yang Baki, uh, he says it's uh, omega to the minus two third. But we actually found that uh, the, the, the coefficient of that minus two third term is actually zero. The, the, the surviving correction is actually to the order of omega to the zeros. So, there, there is actually a, a, a quite a simple understanding of why why this might happen. It's uh, related to the to the to the to the to the, to the kinematic properties of a two-dimensional Fermi surface. So you, you can just uh, consider, for example, a, a, a 2D convex Fermi surface, for example, a circular one. Then you you can you can you can ask for what what, what kind of uh, scattering events are allowed on a Fermi surface that satisfy momentum conservation. Uh, for example, for a generic setting where you start with two random uh, initial momentum that, that doesn't add up to zero. You find that there are only two two possible configurations, which is first the forward scattering, or or you you swap these two particles. So now the current that, that doesn't really relax because the system is in the same configuration. Uh, uh, so uh, but then there, there's a special case where when uh, what we call head-on scattering is when the two incoming momentum they they sum up to zero. Then it turns out that this head-on scattering event it has a very large Fermi surface for scattering. So it means that you can start from a head-on pair and scatter to any other head-on pair. Uh, but the, the issue with this kind of uh, uh, scattering event is that the, 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 the parity of this kind of configuration is always even because you, you, you flip that conversion, you, you get back to itself. So it, it, can, it cannot really relax any all parity perturbation of the Fermi surface, which for example, when we we'll drive the current and so on. All parity, uh, 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 all parity uh, uh, modification of the Fermi surface. So, so therefore, the all the all parity modes actually relax uh, very slow. So, to actually try, try to guess what, what, what is the possible uh, relaxation rate of this mode, we can we can employ a, a, a picture of diffusion on the Fermi surface. So. Uh, if you can think of as a, a scattering of fermions as a doing some random walk on the Fermi surface, then, then usually you will think that the, the, the random walk, uh, when you average a random walk, you will get a, a diffusion equation, which is uh, give you a second order derivative. But it actually turns out that because of this kind of a momentum conservation on the Fermi surface, uh, what we get is actually a, a super diffusion. That means that the, 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 the diffusion equation is, is actually fourth order. So this is also related to the the recent uh, story that people look, uh, look at those the series with, with the dipole conservation is also because the central mass is conserved during during the during a random walk event and, and here it's a similar so we can now ask how how how, how, how do we estimate that this uh, diffusion uh, diffusion constant it's actually very simple it, it, it's just given by the, the 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 rate of your your diffusion event which is just given by your self energy and the angular step of your of your single random walk. So so these kind of numbers you, you could you could read off from the set of point equations. For example, the, the sub energy is like over to two thirds, and then the the, the 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 typical angular step is the typical momentum of the boson, which is uh, scale is omega to one third. And therefore, you will find out that diffusion uh, coefficient goes like uh, uh, omega squared. So uh, this is how we how 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 we we'll obtain this correction. That's at the order of omega to the zeros. Uh, right. So now we we are done with the the transitional environment case. So we do not get string metal. So we have to move on. And then sorry, uh, sorry. Uh, sorry. So if if the Fermi surface is not as simple as a convex single component, and yeah, if it's not convex, then you, you do get the, right. the term go back. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh. Right, we then we have to move on to consider, uh, for example, the effects of disorder. Then uh, you, you just add a, 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 a potential disorder term, which is like a vij times psi i dagger psi j, and, and you just scale it appropriately to get a larger limit. And, and in this case, we found out that the, 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 the low energy limit of the fixed point is remodified, and you uh, 
you do not no longer get a non thermal equilibrium, you actually get marginal thermal equilibrium. It means that the self energy you get actually goes like a, 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 there's a, a, a omega log one or omega in the fermion self energy. And uh, the dynamic exponent of the boson is also different. It's now two instead of three. Uh, right. So so now because there is this uh, this kind of term in the fermion self energy, when you calculate the, the thermodynamics, we find that it's plus a key goes like t of one or t. So we have uh, we are we have success halfway. But then if, if you try to look at a transport of uh, of the problem, you find that the uh, that the the, 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 the linear uh, that doesn't survive into a transport. So this can also be, be, be considered in this kind of a, a mindset of a diffusion on the Fermi surface. So your diffusion, uh, but now because there is no moment conservation, the diffusion is a generic diffusion, which is just a usual second order one. But then if you try to estimate this diffusion constant, you will find that uh, it is a uh, uh, scale of omega squared, just because the self energy scale is a model of omega, but then the, 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 the angular step will scale as uh, like a square root of omega. So in total, get omega squared. So therefore, the, the transport, when you look at it, it still kind of looks like a formula because it starts from order t squared. Uh, right, so, so therefore, that's uh, our final proposal. So uh, you actually need, need, to, uh, need to need to consider some more exotic disorder, which is uh, a, 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 a disorder that, 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 that does not conserve momentum. That means the disorder is in the, uh, in the uh, coupling between the fermions and the bosons. And now, if you're trying to think of this problem in this uh, kind of uh, uh, a diffusion model, you will find that, uh, that the angular step of your single diffusion actually now becomes large because uh, momentum is all conserved. Uh, you could scatter from anywhere on the Fermi surface to anywhere. So your angular step will now be of order one. Then this kind of uh, uh, estimate will tell you the diffusion constant will go like a model meter. That means the, your, 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 uh, your, 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 your receptivity will scale as a model mega. Then if you translate that to a temporary scale, you will get a linear in T receptivity. Uh, uh, any other questions? What exactly is the expression for T prime? Like the inert term. Uh, right, yeah, so I didn't write it down here. It's like, uh, it's like, uh, it's, uh, so it's like uh, this term you put off the windows is there. All this. Yeah. What's the difference between doing the the four fermion like you know, SYK two four versus doing it this way that you call on? Uh, I think the problem is SYK is like a, it doesn't have a space. Right? Oh, right. the, the, the flavors are, are oh. yeah the. You don't need to get the Fermi surface, right? Yeah. Not one yeah. Right. I also have a separate story about if you uh, the meat that's like I also give you a strange network. Right? Yeah, that's maybe another time. <laughs> right. Then, for example, you could we, we, we could try to test this theory, for example, to, to numerically solve those uh, set of equations with uh, with a G prime model with some some more more realistic forms of it, for example, on square lattice. We actually found that uh, you could try to tune the boson mass to Assess the a firm liquid phase and and uh, and the critical point. You will find that at the critical point, the the, the receptivity is actually linear in T. So this is supposed to be sort of a critical uh, fermions coupled to critical boson. That's where your boson mass is zero. Right. So that's yeah. the, the boson that mass. Level, it would be like something that's been done many times before. Yeah. You're making the coupling random, which right. gives you all this magic. Right. Yes. Yeah, so, right, and uh, yeah, I was uh, thinking about this stuff at this point, but yesterday the one tell me that my uh, the two collaborators have given this talk here twice. So we don't remember. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I decided to, uh, to start talking about some, some, some new, new stuff that, uh, that might be interesting. So, so it's like, uh, okay, now we have this kind of theory here, then, then can, can, can we say more about it? About the properties of the series, like how, how can we probe it experimentally? So the things that I've been looking into recently is, is to, to, to probe it through some response uh, to uh, uh, to magnetic fields. Uh, but uh, two, two things I'm going to talk about first is the the the, the you can you can measure the, the local distal states of a non-thermal liquid, and then 
and then you will you will actually show the interesting behaviors. And then the second thing I'm going to propose is that you can you can you can measure the cycle from resonance, and then there is also uh, some 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 new response that people haven't thought of. Yeah. So right. So here is, is what happens if, if you let us suppose you try to measure the low, the, the local tensor states of the, of the primary liquid. For example, if, if you do some kind of a if you could do an STM measurement on a, on on a primary liquid in the magnetic field, and then this is what you find as you uh, as you scan through your energy, you you uh, you will find that your your your, your local tensor states are just uh, will, will show show these oscillations uh, uh, just because your system is quantizing on our levels. So uh uh in in this uh so so the the local state states in the magnetic field for example uh being right 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 in this following form that can be decomposed into into harmonics of, of, of oscillations so in uh uh in uh, a from liquid the self transition doesn't matter so you only look at this, this bare frequency omega term then what you find is that this whole thing will, 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 will oscillate at the period of omega c, which is the, the bare cyclotron frequency. So as you can see here, it's uh, there are there are there are there are many periods, and then you can check that their spacing is actually the, the, the spacing between these uh, mini mass. You can try to plot them and then fit it. You will find that it's a it's a pretty linear function, and then the spacing uh, you get is actually pretty close to the to the to the to the to the cyclotron frequency of the of the thermal liquid. So it doesn't rebound us. Why do you say this is local density state? Because I integrate all, all the momentum. I see. Yeah. Uh, right. But then you could try to compare that with uh, with a non-firm liquid. So so when you when you, when you go to a non-firm liquid, uh, you will find that uh, the self energy now is much larger than the spare frequency. That's uh, how we define a non-firm liquid. So so the the the, the frequency dependence now is dominated, actually dominated by the self, self energies here and here. So, so the first thing that you see that because the self energy becomes large, the, 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 the oscillations in, in energy is in frequency actually damped. So you will see that there, 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 are, there, are, there are much less periods that you can see. And then if, if, if you will try to, to track track the minima of those uh, those values, and then you, you you plot the energy as a function of your index, you will find that it's, it's actually uh, it starts to be nonlinear, and the spacing is, is actually uh, is, is starts to be normalized. Uh, here, the bare type of frequency is zero point one. The, the spacing I call is like a zero point zero six, and then the, the dependence is also nowhere linear. So, uh, so, so this is something that you, you could, in principle, try to see in a in a non form liquid. If, if if you could ever do a, do a STM measurement on a non form liquid. What's the lowest temperature at which non thermal liquid is observed? Lowest the temperature. Because STM to have, you know, charge energy resolution to see sure. modulation, you need to be at low temperature. Yeah. Here it's actually we assume to be zero temperature. I know in yeah. calculation, but right. if you want to, so if you want to convince someone to do an experiment, you need right. to have a material system that's going to exhibit non thermal liquid behavior. Yeah. At the temperatures where STM can be done with the energy resolution. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, I don't have a. I know I'm not thinking about any particular materials for that kind of measurement. So I don't know. I think I could say basically the thing you want to compete with is probably the 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 the, the disorder in the system. You want to not only go to win over disorder. Right. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't know for now. And sorry, there was um, famous is post such just dropping by my office earlier this afternoon. Right. She, she got me thinking. Okay. Right. And uh, uh, right, and then there, there is another. Okay, so the the, the SPM proposal is probably still a proposal yet, but there is this uh, second thing, the second resonance there actually has been measured in complete. So, um, so right. So the cycle of resonance is a very simple high high school physics. It just means that uh, if you put an electron in magnetic field, you will you will you will you will go around the the uh, you will you go around the magnetic field, and then the, the frequency of the circular motion is uh, uh, e b over m. So this is called uh, the cyclotron resonance. 
So, for example, you, the means that when we try to measure, for example, the optical activity, you will find that there, there is a, a resonance peak at this frequency. So, so this omega c is called the cyclotron frequency, and then this mc is called the cyclotron mass. So, this kind of uh, phenomenon has already been measured, for example, uh, in the optical activity through some some terahertz, uh, uh, some terahertz uh, spectroscopy measurements. So right, so for a for a translational environment and guide environment not from liquid, there is uh, this theorem that's by by Kong uh, many decades ago that actually tells you that uh, the, the the cyclotron frequency uh, it, it does not normalize. So in our story, we can show that using the same set of calculation that show the uh, the show show the show the cancellation of this omega to the minus two third uh, optical activity. The same calculation can also show that the cyclotron uh, the, the, the cyclotron frequency it uh, does not normalize. It is uh, uh, still given by the EBOM where M is your bare mass. It's not a, uh, it's not any renormalized mass. <laughs> so therefore, if you ignore those uh, those uh, small scattering events that happens uh, that, that happens on the Fermi surface, you will find that your your conductivity will just go like a uh, one over omega square minus omega c square. But however, when people go go to look at this thing in Cooper, it's, uh, it's uh, down by, by, by Peter Armitage's school. It's actually found that the the, the, the cyclotron uh, cyclotron mass actually uh, depends on the doping and it, it changes as as a, as a doping in Cooper. So the data here is the following: the top panel, these are uh, these are the different uh, these are the, the different cyclotron masses that he measures as a function of. Uh, of the doping P and that this color code is uh, the, the, the temperature of the measurement scale. You can see it can, can kind of evolves uh, smoothly as, as you dope across the, the critical doping. And then here he also compares with, with those squares, which are, are, are the thermodynamic masses that you measure from the specific key. And you can see that it, these two masses, they are different. So now, so basically now the question was answered. So first of all, why, 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 so why, 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 why this mass? Mass is changing, and then second, why is it different from the the, the thermodynamics mass? Actually, it depends on your basic yeah. point. So, the cyclotron motion we think about them in in situations without any disorder, right? But right. are we going to compare that to your theory with explicit spatial disorder? Uh, How right. does that? Is, is there going to be a parameter space where you have to focus? Uh, on to make sense of everything, or uh, it just generally? Yeah, of course you want to. Yeah, of course the story I'm going to tell is that disorder will, will change things. But then, of course, there's a debate whether how much to this, how large the disorder should be. But I think uh, that there is a generic chance that the disorder will will change things more more efficiently than the other thing. Okay, so but let me just make sure that I'm actually talking about cyclotron motion in a disorder back. Right. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so, so so before talking about disorder, so let me just mention some more conventional proposals. Uh, that's uh, that, 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 that is basically the, 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 the only earliest theories on, on this uh, cyclotron motion I, I could find for, for Fermi liquid, which is uh, this one that's been given by, uh, that's done by Kanki and Yamada in the 90s. So he showed that in the Fermi liquid, if you have uh, have a environments, you you will you will not get any you still say by considering, but then you could break things a little bit by by for example consider the, considering the the wound collapse scatterings. So they actually try to calculate the effect of wound collapse scattering, but but there is also thought that there is a non-zero effect, but it seems to be pretty small. Like a, uh, so 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 this is this is a result in the Hubble model with everything with all the coupling set over one, but then you see that the the the, the, the renormalization to velocity is only at order of of one percent. So. The uh, wound collapse seems to be uh, is in principle it could it could break the 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 theorem, but it seems it's not very efficient at doing that. And this is at half going or uh, yeah near half going. So right, so therefore we just uh, consider the effect of, of a disorder uh, on the on the cyclotron resonance. So. So uh, as I told you earlier, that the, the momentum conserving calculations still satisfy considering. So I'll, I'll just consider the, the the potential disorder and the disorder interaction. 
And now, because uh, the, the collision is actually very simple, because because the moment is not conserved, there, there, there's no 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 vertex correction you need to consider. So to actually calculate the, the connectivity, you just need to sum a, a single bubble. So uh, you can you can just evaluate all those experiments numerically and then get some plots of the of the of, of the of the optical connectivity that look like that. So the sigma mass plus meaning I'm, I'm looking at the circular polarized basis. So I I, I only get get a, a single resonance at the at the at the at positive omega c. So and then here we can also look at the shape of of these uh, peaks like uh, by by by, by correcting so for example by correcting how wide is it on the left and on the right. So right so here 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 is a is a qualitative feature of showing you what what happens when you put in this order. So for example uh, here in this blue curve it's a uh, uh, okay so the the, the self energy I'm going to use is a marginal problem liquid self energy which I assume just sort of arises from those disorder interaction and plus a a, a a a potential disorder which I call gamma. And uh, the then I consider a, a, a cyclotron bare cyclotron frequency at the order like 0 0.5. So I, I must assure this the bare cyclotron frequency is larger than the than the than the potential disorder because otherwise you wouldn't see a, a body find the cyclotron resonance. So so first I consider just a, a very clean uh, from liquid, like there's very small disorder interaction, a very small potential disorder. I, I was just see a, a perfectly symmetric peak at the 0 0.5. And then, for example, I can try to turn on the potential disorder. You will see this peak uh, will get normalized down a little bit uh, down here, but the peak becomes uh, uh, very wide. The width is at the order of like 0 0.5. Then I could I could try to compare it uh, if I turn if I turn on the, the interaction disorder. You will see that there, the the the, the, the normalization here is actually more dramatic. It's actually uh, down by by a factor of more than two. Then you can see that the the peak uh, that that's procured. That's produced by the interaction is often is actually not, not much sharper. I'm sorry, the sorry. gamma is the gamma is the scattering rate due to potential disorder. Potential, okay, got it. And it is the interaction. Okay. Yeah, so uh, so for example, I could try to look at for example how 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 the how the cyclotron mass is uh, normalized by the interaction disorder. And here I just plot it as a function of the uh, interaction disorder at the different potential disorders. You can see that uh, once I turn on interaction disorder, it 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 gets larger very quick. But then the effect of turning on the the potential disorder is actually very minor. So it does increase a little bit, but not but not too much. And then another thing is that you can look at how 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 the shapes of, of, of this peaks evolve. So for example, I can look at how 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 asymmetric are these peaks. And then it turns out that once I turn on the the the, the interaction disorder, the, the, the peaks they all become very, 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 very asymmetric. It's uh, uh it's wider on the right than it than to the left. So it's wider, it decays slower at the at the larger frequency size. And then another thing is that you can actually actually look at look at look at look at look at the widths of your peaks, like the total widths when when the when 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 the intensity drop uh it drops to one half. And then it turns out that actually if you crank up the interaction disorder, actually find out that the peaks become become sharper and sharper. The 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 widths just just uh, just get smaller. And particularly, so you can see that here when the when the when the interaction disorder is zero, the 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 widths are here. So if you try to this is not maybe not obvious, but if you try to compare these numbers to the gamma here, you will find that the, the widths here are they, they, they are basically two gamma. But then as you as you crank up the interaction disorder, the, the, the widths actually become smaller. That, that means we, 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 can, we can actually make a prediction that you can check uh, with the DC resistivity. Because in principle, uh, the uh, the gamma is 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 what you measure at the at the zero temperature at zero frequency. So therefore. Uh, you, 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 you can try to extract the value of gamma from from, from the residual from the residual uh, resistivity of the, the DC uh, resistivity data, and then you can try to compare it with the widths you measure from from the cyclotron resonance. Then, if there is a, a substantial uh, a substantial interaction disorder, then it might happen that the, the widths you find the uh, you find here will 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 actually be smaller than the the the, the, the scattering rate you extract from the from the DC resistivity. 
So, so th this cannot be explained, for example, if you just consider a, a simple theory with only potential disorder, because in that way, you'll find that the, the, the width is, is actually a constant that's, that is equal to two gamma. Uh, it, cannot, it, cannot, it can never become smaller. Right, so yeah, so I think uh, it's a good time to stop here. So just let me summarize. So we have uh, proposed a large end formulation of the critical from of this problem, which uh, by making the redirection random, and then we can actually uh, a, 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 a obtain a set of points with the algebra equations. And we can consider three different kinds of models. So for a transitional invariant non-form liquid, we find the infinity DC connectivity uh, just because of momentum conservation, and then there is a only a to minus two third connectivity uh, uh, that we found actually uh, it cancels out due to the, this uh, kind of a slow slow relaxation dynamics mm -hmm. uh, on the permit surface. Then we next we try to put a potential disorder. We found a marginal from liquid, but non a uh, but non a uh, still not strange matter. We didn't find linear two resistivity. And uh, then we found out actually gave us a linear two resistivity is the, the disorder in the interaction couplings. Then I actually, then I can say that uh, I can next I discussed that we can use those uh, magnetic fields, for example, to to probe the local density of states of a non-form liquid, and actually can 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 the interaction is also also uh, explain the the normalization of the the cyclotron frequency that has been seen. Yeah. Okay. Does your your model give us super connectivity? Uh, this is something that uh, we're working on. Now. Yeah, there there is a super connectivity, but you need to try to modify the problem because right now the coupling is complex. So if the explicit breaks down resource symmetry, we need to consider the couplings to be real. So the theory will be a little bit different. And also, can you consider similar models where you both on kinds of finite momentum, so where the outspots of the uh it doesn't matter for this interaction disorder because momentum is not conserved anyway. Yeah, there's no difference uh, for this interaction disorder. There won't be any difference if like, the front surface has a different shape, like you still call it for the surface. Yeah, if you just consider this transitory invariant the case, yes, there will be different. But if there's a like, potential disorder, you uh, Disorder, yeah, I think there is uh, also some difference if you, if you try to perturb on top of that for the disorder. Does it matter that the disorder has to be average, like the mean has to be zero for shift? Uh, that's the same. Uh, it doesn't, you mean the the the, the interaction, the, the flavor of the real space one? No, and the interaction disorder that was at a strength. Like G, but the but the mean was zero, right? Right. It but doesn't it doesn't right? matter, right? You get we, we actually consider a theory where you you have a non-zero mean on top of on top of that uh, Gaussian fluctuating part. It, it doesn't change things. When the boson orders, this becomes literally the same as an Emerson equation problem. So. Uh, or the large N is scale such a way that it's the Emerson localization is always happening on super low energy scale. Yeah, I think the larger limit uh, doesn't take into account the gravitational effects. Right. Yeah, it's probably some one over N corrections that you can see. Yeah. Um, when you say momentum is not conserved, how far can you take that from the surface? How? how? So momentum is not conserved? Right. So, I guess, I, what do you mean specifically? Like the total momentum of the whole system? So you're moving the whole Fermi surface? It's the interaction. Yeah, yeah the, the interaction doesn't conserve momentum. So. Oh, just the interaction. Right. Interaction with the boson. Right. Do we have Zoom running? Yeah, I think it's still running. Um, just... Is somebody recording or? Or something. Yeah, I think it's uh, it shows live here. Oh, okay. So this is being streamed. Okay. Gotta be careful. <laughs> <laughs> Please stop that. <laughs> stop that stream. Uh, yeah, 
Ja, dann das, ich nehme gerne Stapel zu.